Stan, something that you would recommend so, us to refer to? So I, I look at this uh, a bit differently. I think there's, uh, there's so much material out about uh, educating ourselves and, and the good uh, uh, statistics and data, and there are many things to read. Uh, my view is, you come back to what I said before, read something and, uh, and, and relax and read something that you like, I think is one of the best things you can do. Good advice. Wayne? Uh, I'm reading a book at the moment that I think says that we can actually change. I think exactly forgetting the exact title, I think it's The Brain That Changes uh, by a Dr. Doyce. It's really about the plasticity of the brain and how we can actually change. So even though we might have built up habits in our lifetime, we can actually change that. And there's some inspiring stories in that about people that have suffered incredible injuries, but brain injuries included, have been able to reinvent themselves and get back into active life. Uh, it brings together a whole lot of things that I've learned over a lot of times about how you can change attitudes and change behaviours. Uh, and so I, I certainly encourage that. The other thing I'd encourage from an employer perspective is the work health initiative that we have in Victoria that the government have committed you know, $218 million for is providing free health checks for employees. We're actively involved in that program. It's a collaboration between government, unions and employers to encourage employees to, to have a health check, 15, 20 minute health check. We've now had 100,000 people go through that, those health checks and the data that we're able to now gather from that is telling us not only confirming what we've heard from this Congress, but actually that we are a lot un more unhealthy than what we actually realise. And our risks are a lot bigger than what we actually realise. That, well, I would say, is a huge wake-up call as to what we should be doing about it. Mm. And what it also said is that most people, this is a, a generalisation, that most people had a higher appreciation or higher understanding of their health. They thought they were healthier than what they really were. So it's a good wake-up call. So I'd encourage people to get hold of those statistics from the Work Health uh, website, because it brings back to reality what each of us need to do. And I'd encourage everyone on that basis to undertake one of the health checks in their workplace or encourage their employer to provide it. They're free, and it gives a wealth of information that we can actually apply. And that's really led us to uh, the exercise that we had recently where the Premier convened a, a round table, I had the pleasure of co-chairing that, to bring together the Work Health Initiative, which will lead on to other activity, the No Leave No Life program that I mentioned before about encouraging, in fact there was a statistic I meant to mention before, we have in this country 123 million days of accrued leave. 43% of people who are in the employment situation have more accrued leave than their, than their entitlement in an annual year. Mm. Well, people aren't taking their leave, so there's an encouragement to get active. That fits on to $33 billion on the balance sheets of this country as a liability. So we need to get that out into the workforce. So we brought that program into it as well. And we also considered then the Healthy Parks, Healthy People initiative, three programs that are all effectively seeking to achieve a similar objective. And looked collaboratively at that, looked at all of the evidence to say, how can we actually deal with this issue of preventative health in a collective way, and recognise that we're all trying to have the same outcome. And therefore, as a result of that, that uh, round table, we're forming a high-level strategic task force. In fact, this afternoon, I'm meeting with the Premier to take the next step in establishing that task force to bring all of these activities together to say what is a holistic program that we can develop. Inevitably, this is going to need to lead to a social marketing exercise. How do we encourage uh, and put a lot of this evidence out? People who have been to this Congress are now well informed about what the issues are, but what about the broader community? And therefore, we need to collaborate on these sort of activities. The key message, I think, that came out of the Work Health Initiative, I have recently had the opportunity to go overseas and study some of these activities was that a lot of us in our age group, it's probably too late. We're, we might improve, uh, picking up on uh, William's initiative about we need to get more active as we get older. But our ageing workforce, I mean, it's insightful to recognise that the first baby boomer retires this year. So recognising that we're probably beyond redemption, the key advice was really keep healthy people healthy. So focus right back at the beginning and focus right through education, right through those in the active times of their life to stay healthy that will give us a better outcome at the end result. We're in very good hands with uh, all Melbournians, I'm sure, know Wayne Keller Thompson, so uh, Becky doing a great job. Special thanks to Dr William Bird, to Wayne Keller Thompson, to Stan Mazionis, and to Dr Howard Frumpkin. Um, terrific advice, gentlemen. Uh, I call it streetwise, street smart advice, which we've just got to listen, we've got to do what you're telling us, and uh, hopefully with the ageing population, we'll be one of those people that receives a telegram from the Queen. Thank you, our panellists, please, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.